Wasabi guys, coming back at you again with another Commander Secrets video. We're going to be looking at another pretty cool interactive card. This time we're going to be looking at one of my favorite blue cards, Rite of Replication from Original Zendikar. And I know it's going to be very similar to the one I did last video, Blade of Cells, because there's a lot of interactions with copying creatures and the legendary rule yet again. You're going to see a lot of the same cards that are good with Blade of Cells in this video as well. So we're just going to go over some of them pretty quickly we of course have reaper king a card that i absolutely love really dangerous with right of replication getting five more scarecrows entering the battlefield they all see themselves at the same time so you're going to be getting five triggers times six this is assuming that is your reaper king that you're kicking it on that would mean you have 30 reaper king triggers that is insane 30 of them you get to destroy 30 permanents that is crazy omnath locus of rage is awesome with this card whether it's yours or your opponents if it's yours you get five more of them gonna be six total omnath triggers five of them are going to be leaving so you're gonna get 30 of those lightning bolt triggers that's gonna be a total of 90 damage that's crazy and just to clarify because some people don't know how the legendary rule works it is a state-based action you cannot interact with cards that are going to be leaving because of the legendary rule you can't sacrifice them because it is a state-based action like the untap step you can't interact with it you can't respond to it however cards can still enter the battlefield and then leave the battlefield because in order for the state-based action to occur the creatures do have to enter the battlefield first so they will get those triggers and those creatures then leave the battlefield after the state-based action so then you get the death triggers as well because the act of a creature even though it doesn't say it on the actual ruling the act of the creature actually going to the graveyard is considered dying so you do get death triggers off of your legendary creatures that do end up hitting the graveyard and tokens do technically hit the graveyard so omnath and reaper king are two really fun examples of how to take advantage of the legend rule and you also have you might remember vela the nightclad which is yet another one same thing if it's your vela the nightclad you get five more entering the battlefield and then leaving the battlefield so that's going to be five leaving so six total triggers five times each it's going to be 30 life each of your opponents are going to be losing that should be enough to at least put them on the ropes if not completely knock them out of the game so that is just the jankiness of this card you can throw it into a vela the nightclad deck and you honestly should you should throw it into a reaper king deck omnath locus of rage is a little bit harder though because it is off color you would need to be playing something like maybe an animar deck or horde of notions if you want to synergize with elementals or my personal favorite kineos and tyro to get landfall triggers for omnath that's why i have him in there in the first place and then you have right of replication there just to kick any good creatures but it does combo with omnath but there are some pretty cool combos and one that is pretty obvious is biovisionary at the beginning of the end step if you control four more creatures named biovisionary you win the game you're going to get five tokens off of right of replication that all have the same name biovisionary so at the end step you should be able to win so it's pretty obvious not a very interesting combo but it does win you the game nevertheless another cool combo is eternal witness or archaeomancer any creature that is capable of getting you your right of replication back from your graveyard to your hand in combination with time warp so essentially what you do is you cast a time warp if you already have your eternal witness on the field it's going to be easier to do that you don't have to do it all in the same turn save your mana up and then you cast your right of replication on eternal witness and then once that resolves right of replication is already in your graveyard that way your eternal witnesses entering the battlefield then get to trigger and you get to return your time warp and your right of replication to your hand get an extra turn you get to copy them all over again and you get to have pretty much infinite turns until you get whatever you're looking for or enough eternal witnesses to swing out so that's a pretty cool synergy there and yet another interesting combo is dual caster mage this one is a little bit tricky because some people can misplay but you actually have to put dual caster mage on the stack you can't just have him sitting on the field and then decide to kick him because it's a little bit different from eternal witness what you have to do is either your opponents are kicking a ride of replication or you are and then you get to respond to it with your own dual caster mage so what this ends up doing is pretty much giving you infinite dual caster mages without haste so that is a fun little interaction there unfortunately i don't believe you can pay the kicker cost so it's just going to give you infinite dual caster mages but it will allow you to keep putting dual caster mages on the stack targeting the original right of 
replication and then you get more more copies so that is yet another pretty interesting interaction there i could be wrong about the kicker cost but i think i'm right about it and we of course have cards like consecrated sphinx which are just ridiculous in numbers if your opponents have a consecrated sphinx it's pretty much going to be collusion between you and that opponent let's just draw as many cards as we feel like but you having five consecrated sphinxes means that it's their turn to draw a card you're going to be drawing 12 cards that's ridiculous and while it is a main you don't technically have to do it that is just insane card draw you almost don't even want to draw that many cards just because of how big of a target you're going to be i mean six consecrated sphinxes or at least five off of this is going to be ridiculous and we of course have awesome etbs don't forget crater hoof behemoth getting five of those entering the battlefield at the same time they all see themselves entering the battlefield so you're going to get at least plus five plus five trample they all have haste that alone should be enough to finish off a lot of people but when you consider you're probably going to have other creatures on the field as well that's even more deadly you of course have removal based creatures like terracidon acidic slime reclamation sage that all devastate your opponents if you get multiple copies especially terracidon getting three different non-creature targets and getting five more of them that is ridiculous 13 non-creature permanents this is including lands i don't care if they get three three tokens i really don't i'm gonna have what six nine nines to block all day so i'm not too concerned absolutely devastating for your opponents to have to deal with that much removal ridiculous and you of course have massacre worm getting five of those your opponents are going to get minus two minus two for each massacre worm and they're going to lose a bunch of life because each massacre worm is going to trigger when their creatures die so yet another cool win con an awesome interaction that works out brilliantly and you also have psychosis crawler getting five more of these means that whenever you want to draw a card each opponent is going to be losing a life for each psychosis crawler that you have so if you have any way to wheel or windfall you pretty much have the win right there. That is ridiculous. Not to mention their power and toughness can vary depending on how many cards you have in your hand. So you could have a ton of good creatures because of that. So that's pretty cool. And not to mention, we just have decks that are good with numbers, such as Wizards and Merfolk. So having a card like Galecaster Colossus is pretty cool. Getting five more of those is even better. Same thing with Lull Mage Mentor. Getting five more of those makes it easier for you to go on a combo with maybe Paradox Engine, tapping down all your creatures, because you have a ton of merfolk to work with, and then getting the counter spells all day long. That is just devastating. But aside from that, there are a whole bunch of cool creatures that you can kick a Rite of Replication on, and it doesn't necessarily have to have any busted interaction, as long as it's a pretty good creature. It never hurts to get Blightsteel Colossus kicked, even though it doesn't combo when it enters the battlefield, you still have, you know, pretty good creatures that are win cons practically if they're able to connect even something like lord of extinction no good keywords but it's still a pretty powerful creature just a fantastic blue card even if you're not going to go heavy with control having a cool card to interact with is always important especially if you want to make big moves in a game and that's really what commander is all about making big moves now it might be a while before i go back to talking about copying interactions because this is like the third card in a row the first card i did was fractured identity giving your opponents copies of creatures second one i did was Blade of Selves, giving ourselves copies of creatures, fooling around with a legendary rule. This one I think is even better. It is going to be a total of 9 mana if you kick it, but it's definitely worth it. When you consider that, I mentioned a bunch of win cons and just a bunch of devastating interactions. It truly is a fun card. I know people always like to view blue as the most oppressive color in magic especially in commander you have so many cards to play around with in this eternal format but there are just some fun copying interactions we know about phyrexia metamorph we know about clever impersonator the usual clones in the format but Rite of Replication takes it to a whole nother level. It's a fantastic card. And yeah, worst case scenario, it is just a four mana sorcery version of a clone, which is terrible. So you do need to be able to get up to nine mana in a game to make use of it. So I just felt like I should state the obvious there. And obvious inclusions into decks like Brago King Eternal, Rune of the Hidden Realm, those are both decks that love interacting with good ETB creatures as well. Because that's also what you really want to get out of good creatures, is their ETBs. And Rite of Replication is perfect in those two decks for that whole reason. I mean, a fantastic card, brilliant, and that's why it's my favorite blue card, to be honest. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. 
Let me know if you like this series. I'm going to try to continue it, try to think of new commander ideas, cards that I can interact with, go in depth and review. I know some people might know this card. It's pretty common. A lot of people put it in their commander decks, but I don't think everybody knows all the possible interactions or even most of the interactions that I have stated in this video. But as always, you guys have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video.